let me tell you something about Coach Saban, one of his beliefs that's permeated every guy that's ever coached for him. All the hype, it lasts till you get punched in the mouth. Well, once you get punched in the mouth, you fall back on your preparation. And you got to be a relentless ass competitor. If not, it's going to be a long afternoon. Clemson has this team that Tommy Bowden and the Tiger fans have been waiting to see for a long time. Clemson fans were expecting to win. I think we had 18 starters returning right around there. Had a quarterback, Cullen Harper was coming back, a running back, C.J. Spiller, had a pretty good wide receiver, Aaron Kelly, and enough uh, defensive players we thought well, we could have a pretty good year. It was fascinating because it was the first Chick-fil-A kickoff game. So no one really knew what to expect. And Clemson was the team that was expected to contend for a championship. It was Tommy Bowden's 10th year there. And as far as Alabama was concerned, we really didn't know what to expect. Nick Saban as a championship coach, we all expected him to get there, but I don't know that any of us really believed it was going to happen in 2008. So if we had anything that we thought was, I guess, a competitive advantage going to the season, we really didn't know how good we were gonna be. I remember feeling very optimistic. I think there was a quiet confidence around that we had a, a great, infusion of guys who were already there. We knew what they could do, but also a great nucleus of young talent. Going into the Clemson game, the season opener, I was very excited to see how good this team was and see a lot of these players who I'd only seen on the practice field, to see them in an actual game situation against Coach Bowden and his bunch. It wasn't so much were we going to win, how much were we going to win by. Of course, as a coach, you try to prepare your team totally different. You don't listen to what newspapers say. Man. I know this program, I know about the head coach, I know the quality of players they'd had. We recruited against Alabama a lot. Dabo Sweeney was on my staff, we played at Alabama, I recruited Alabama. Uh, I knew that it was going to be a very tough job, but the Clemson people were expecting a win and, and a significant win. That was a great opportunity for our guys to say, hey, we're the Alabama of old, we're, we're, we're going to step out and show you what we're about. For the senior class, we wanted to go out on a note that let people know that, you know, Alabama is back, Alabama is a dominant school, and we're not going to be the underdogs. We're going to be the bullies on the block. When we roll in, you're not going to want to play us. I remember starting out the game, I felt like we would be able to run the ball a little bit. And it's a thunderous effort by the Tide right now. Terrence Cody, their 365-pound nose man, blows the play out. We quickly became one-dimensional, and there was some big guy in the middle. He was always in the backfield, hadn't heard much about him, knew they had signed a junior college big guy, but, you know, sometimes a big 300-pound guy fatigues early. You make a couple plays, and he's out resting eight or nine plays, but we couldn't handle him inside. It was a complete mismatch. Clemson finished with zero rushing yards. Zero. It is Jacoby Boyd. Oh my! Harper under pressure, loads up throws, tipped by McLean and intercepted by Johnson. Shotgun, Cullen Harper under pressure, going down! The thing that really stood out to you on the sideline when you're watching that game is, hey, we got big, fast, physical, smart football players that love playing the game. We kind of took it you know, personally upon us on the offensive line. Uh, we've got to go out there and control the clock and put drives together and give John Parker time to find some of his wide receivers. John Parker throws right, looks into the end zone. Touchdown, Nick Walker. Here's your third and three, and Wilson's going to throw for the end zone. Touchdown, there's the youngster's first touchdown with the Crimson Tide. Julio Jones caught, I think, four passes that day. That was our introduction to him as an impact wideout and maybe the biggest name in that 2008 recruiting class. We saw Mark Ingram, his Alabama debut. He led all rushers that game, just short of 100 yards. Those guys in that class making it an immediate impact, and that's when we started to see the hallmark of a Nick Saban program, beating people up physically, running the ball, playing defense, and shutting people down. That is going to do it. Welcome to 2008. The world is again spinning on its axis correctly as Alabama has beaten the number nine team in America decisively. You know, they were supposed to be some of the best guys in the country, and they were physically beat by the end of the game. And I think for the first time, we could honestly say we whipped the team from the first snap to the last whistle. You're dominating your opponent, you're executing, and you're trying to make his ass quit. And that was a good early establishment for that season. We made them quit. 
Now for Nick Saban, it was a man who's going to be managing expectations. More than any touchdown, any catch, any tackle, I remember the post game. It was the first time we were introduced to the concept that Nick Saban would be angrier after a victory than he would ever be after a loss. You know, what our players need to understand, what our fans need to understand, what everybody needs to understand, it's one game. It's one game. All right? And we need to keep playing better, and we need to improve, and our players need to have the focus to improve and remember how they got where they got rather than think that we can just show up now and beat whoever we play. Because we have a tendency to think that way around here. Instead of just kicking people's ass like you're supposed to and working to do it. Something that he would always say after a game like that was the 24-hour rule is in effect. So whether you do good or you do bad, you win a game or you lose a game, when you get to work on Sunday the next day, it's time to go to work. You've got to forget about the last game and you've got to move on to the next one. For me, week one was special, no doubt about it. The Clemson victory was you know, right there at the top of the list. But I, and, and don't tell this to Coach Saban, but I was already looking ahead to week four when Alabama played Georgia. Obviously going in there um, and playing Georgia in, in Athens between the hedges after they had beat us the year before was that next benchmark. Can we really get this done? Boy, they've got talent all over the place. Matt Stafford and A.J. Green and Sean Marino. The list of NFL players goes on, so can we really step our game up and play to those guys' level? The motivational leader of the program, the guy that's really the inspiration of the guys is Scott Cocker. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! I can't remember what day of the week that came out that they were going to do their blackout dog night or whatever it was. But at stretch lines, that day, Coach um, Cochran goes, They're wearing all black. They're going to their, I ain't gonna say exactly what he said, own funeral. Well, our guy's got a kick out of that. I definitely remember what Coach Cochran said. I think everyone by now knows uh, what he said. And uh, hey, he was right, by the way. They were going to a funeral. You know, we just always showed up in the same jerseys no matter what, so it really didn't matter to us. The fact that they think they need a blackout to beat us, of all teams, us, they're worried about us, uh, you know, it was kind of, uh, I mean, we just kind of chuckled at that. I remember Coach Stallings, of course, Alabama's coach in the early 90s, uh, he chimed in and said, well, if you got them worrying about what they're going to wear, you already got them beat. Suffice to say, uniform color doesn't mean a hill of beans. For the first time since 1942, Alabama and Georgia will face each other as undefeated and top 10 teams. If you can't get jacked up for this one, you never will. I think sometimes people uh, imagine that it must be awesome to run out to cheers. I, I thought my favorite experience in college football was running out to booze. It was a us against the world kind of feeling, and I, I think that was probably the loudest I've ever been booed possibly was running out on that field at Georgia. We used that energy for us. It, it was good for us also. There was a lot of fans pulling for them and not a lot of pulling for us, but I think we kind of fed off that also. People talk about being in the zone. Well, for me, this was a game where I was in the zone. Under center, John Parker Wilson gives to Ingram up the middle. Big hole, he's going to go! Touchdown, okay. Alabama! John Parker Wilson, fade route, Julio Jones, and John! Touchdown! <laughs> what, what a, a beautiful pass. fade route! I mean, jaws were dropping. You could not believe it. I mean, this team looked like the best team in America. 8.24 to go in the game. Stafford looks right, looks left, going Dang. down! How about that? Alabama 41, Georgia 30, and it was not even that close. Aga with a frown on his face. We were all saying to ourselves, well now, this is a pretty good football team. This could be a very special season. I don't think it sunk in for me until after the Georgia game. The Clemson game was an awakening, but the Georgia game was, uh, you know, was, you know, damn broke and there was no putting the, the genie back in the bottle after that. I think it gave our team uh, a real confidence that, hey, we can play with anybody. We really can. And that was kind of the first time where, where people started to whisper that, you know what, this team, we have a chance to win a national championship this year. Uh, and that was kind of the goal after that game moving forward that we really wanted to achieve that.
Situated on scenic Mobile Bay, Felix's Fish Camp is the premier choice for fresh Gulf seafood, USDA certified steak, and breathtaking views on the Mobile Causeway. Rebuilding is not something that's a part of the Alabama program anymore. They don't rebuild, they just reload now. But we didn't know that back in 2008. We didn't know reloading was a thing. We thought that we might be going into a rebuilding year. 